Alexander pulls out his Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. There's no reason to use that object there. Pardon me, maid. I hope you don't think me forward. But I see that you like roses. I thought you might, perhaps, like a fresh white rose. Alexander can see the conflict in the girl's pretty face as she fights between her distrust of him and her desire for the white rose. The rose wins. Oh, I shouldn't, sir, but it is so lovely. I've never seen a rose of white. It looks so pale and delicate. Wherever did you find one of such a color? There are many hedges of them on the Isle of the Beast, and they grow together like magic. Oh, truly? What an adventure that must be to see them. But I should not speak so, especially to a stranger. Thank you for the rose, though, kind sir. Do you live in this house, maid? Well, my stepmother and her children live here. Your stepmother? A servant. I see. Is there anything I can do for you, maid? I'm just fine. Tell me, why do you not leave this place? Where could I go? What would I do? Besides, I don't really mind the work, and I would miss my roses. Alexander has a thought about the serving girl. He decides to bring up the subject of beast with her. Let me tell you about the place where the white roses grow. The Isle of the Beast is an enchanted place. There's a path running through a deep forest. The path crosses three magic blockades, set to keep all visitors away. At the center lives a tremendous beast. Really? Magic blockades? How exciting! What kind of a beast? Is it very terrifying and ferocious? It is a beast that walks on two legs and dresses like a prince. It speaks with the voice of a man. A beast that talks and wears clothes? How is that possible? Is the beast magic too? Not magical. Enchanted. Beast was once a prince, but a witch trapped him in the form of a beast and set him on the island. There he lives in a castle in the midst of a maze. How terrible! Imagine how lonely he must be. It is a very lonely prospect, isn't it? Oh, I have met him, you see. He is indeed ferocious, but who would not be? He really exists? Oh, how it breaks my heart. If I could, I would tend to such a beast. Such a beast might find comfort in a kind face. Do you not think it's so? Oh, I think it's so. I very much think it's so. You would not be afraid of him? Afraid? Maybe at first. But how silly of me to speak so. The roses in this little yard are the only magic I will ever see. I could take you there. In fact, I would owe you my life if you would go. If you truly wish to go. You are serious? I could leave here? Oh, I have always dreamt of leaving. But to actually go... This is the only home I have ever known. Home is a hard place to leave. Even if you're unhappy there. But I will go. If I can help him, I, I must go.
Is there nothing you wish to take with you? There is nothing. Then take this ring. It is his. He will be pleased if you would wear it. Why, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Thank you kindly, sir. Beauty! Where do you think you're going? To a place where roses grow and to someone who truly needs me. I see you wear my ring. You willingly agree to spend your life here with me? Do you know what that means? Yes, my lord, I do. I have been touched by your story. Pity alone need not sentence you to endure this face. Oh, but it is a gentle face, and kind. You look at me so sweetly and are not repulsed. Oh, by the light of your eyes, my spirit... Enchantment! It is broken! I am pleased to have served you, my lord. Do you still wish me to stay? What? Speak not such nonsense, beauty. Do you think that I learned nothing of true love during my time here? You are my queen. Oh! My clothes! This gown! How well it suits your noble heart. Alexander, how can I ever repay you? I have nothing to offer except my gratitude. But please, take these old clothes. Perhaps you'll find someone in need during your travels. You have already repaid me by your example of courage, beauty. And by your friendship, I hope. You will always have our friendship and loyalty, Prince Alexander. But from a fellow adventurer, take some advice. If you find your true love, protect her with your life. We're all beasts without the redeeming humanity of love. And to aid you, accept my mirror. Now that my life is no longer hung in false shadows, I have no need for it. Give it to someone with nothing to fear from the truth it reveals. Thank you. I wish you both well. Come, beauty. Let me take you home. Alexander fills the hunter's lamp to the brim with the fountain water. Alexander takes a magnificent white rose from the rose hedges. Alexander pulls out. Alexander feels a strength. Alexander picks up. The little bottle contains some sort of potion and bears a label saying, Drink me. That's rather forward of it.
Your Highness may as well spend her royal time contemplating something else. The lump of coal shall be sent to the Castle of the Crown under my name, and that's all there is to it. No, it shan't. Yes, it shall. If the coal is sent in your name, I shall royally decree a ban on all red on this isle. You do, and I shall royally decree that white shall be henceforth used for all mopping up of cabbage stew. You wouldn't dare! Oh, wouldn't I? Oh, it's you! Have you thought of any more of those brilliant ideas of yours? I found the two of you another lump of coal, so that you can stop fighting over the one you have. Oh, let me see! A lump of coal! And what a beauty it is, too! Marvelous! Now we can stop fighting, sister. Your Highness can just keep the old lump of coal, and I'll take this new one. Quite right. That settles everything. As a token of our endless esteem and royal favor, please accept this magnificent and truly incredible spoiled egg. Uh... Uh... Thanks. Let me see that lump of coal, Your Highness. It is a beauty, isn't it? Why, it's bigger than my lump of coal. Let me have it immediately. Over my dead body, Your Highness, it's my lump of coal. And it is indeed larger and much grander. Just look at that sheen. I demand you exchange with me immediately. Alexander P Alexander feels a Alexander Prince Alexander. If Alexander wants to exchange one of his... Alexander suddenly gets a very sneaky idea. I can't go on anymore. Without Kasima, I'd just rather not live. Prince Alex, no! It's true. The Wazir has beaten me. I give up. Poison is my last resort. Stop! I am... no... more. Oh, what a waste. The poor young fool. He's dead, he's dead. Wait until Abdul hears. He'll be so pleased.
I told you not to pop in like that. You can learn to knock like everybody else. Sorry, Master. I couldn't help myself. I have great news. Well, what is it? Prince Alexander is dead. He killed himself in despair over losing Cosima. <laughs> What? Are you positive? That young man has proven to be most devious. I saw the whole thing myself, Master. He was really and truly quite dead. Hmm. If what you say is true, it shall be most convenient. You've spent enough time on that little irritant. We must start thinking about the wedding. Anything, Master. Oh, I do love weddings. Well, we do want you to look your prettiest, don't we? Now, Shamir Shamizel, to the lamp with you. Prepare yourself as we discussed. Alexander's heart lurches to life in his chest. Prince Alex! But you... you were... Sorry, friend. I was doing a little acting, I'm afraid. Ah, of course, the strange cloaked man. You are quite clever, and a bit too exciting for an old man. Alexander prepares to enchant the hunter's lamp with the Make Rain spell incantation. Clouds of thunder, shafts of light, come and sup with me tonight. Waters three have I for tea, brew a tempest now for me. The lamp in Alexander's hand gives a little perk. He hopes the spell works despite his makeshift teapot. Alexander pulls out his Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Great gods, did you see that? The man just appeared from nowhere. Perhaps he was sent by the spirits. I see no boat. He is an intruder, no matter how he got here. Grab him! Not again. Look, I'll leave. It's no problem. I think not. Let's go. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered around a bonfire. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. But as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. We found a trespasser on the beach, Archdruid. Uh-oh. Archdruid. Now what has Alexander wandered into? This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying. A man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed into the confining wicker cage. And the 
cage is swung out over the bonfire. Alexander starts to feel a little warm. The bottom of the cage is getting uncomfortably hot. This cage is really hot. Fire in the cage! Alexander pulls out Beauty's old slave clothes, desperate to beat out the flames. The flame is extinguished, but the clothes themselves burn to cinders. Alexander won't be able to keep the cage from igniting for long. The heat and movement must have jarred something. Something that Alexander's carrying is starting to jiggle around. Gad, something's really percolating. The water in Alexander's lamp is hot. It's just about boiling. Alexander feels a drop. It starts to rain. That man is a powerful nature wizard. By the sacred oak, let him down! I must apologize for our rude welcoming committee. We've been feeling inhospitable ever since the winged ones stole our sacred miniature oak tree. Besides, Wazir Al-Hazred sent a message that we were to watch out for a highly dangerous foreign assassin. I assume you are the one he meant. I'm sure I'm precisely who he meant. I assure you, I mean to harm no one, unless that person threatens the princess. I'm sorry to have disrupted your ceremony, but I'm running out of time. What is it that you seek? The Oracle on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain told me I should speak to you about the Realm of the Dead. She told me of two souls in unrest there that I might be able to free. Free souls in the Realm of the Dead? You're mad! The souls might be able to help me on my mission to save the princess. It's imperative that I do everything I can. The risks are not important. No, and yet getting yourself killed will hardly help the princess. But I will tell you what I know. Legend has it that it is the right of any human to challenge the Lord of the Dead in order to save his own life or the life of another already past. But the knowledge of how to do this was lost centuries ago. I have only heard of one who tried it, a young knight who came to the land of the Green Isles from a distant land long ago. According to the story, he was determined to challenge the Lord of the Dead for the soul of his dead lover. It is said that he tamed the Lord of the Dead's horse, a black-winged, demon-hearted beast named Nightmare. Nightmare sometimes flies to the human world to feed on certain noxious plants. Those unfortunate enough to see her are glad to escape with their very souls intact. Somehow the knight captured Nightmare and rode off on her back, supposedly to the realm of the dead. But neither the knight nor his lover ever returned. If there was a means for challenge, it was lost with the night. I see. Can you tell me anything about the Lord of the Dead? Ah, that is a blacker matter still. To the Druids, he is Samhain, Lord of coldness and despair. Samhain was once a man like you or I, but he insulted the gods and was sentenced to rule the underworld. Immortal he is and mateless, robbed of sleep, 
robbed of movement, robbed of companionship. It is said that he hates all mortals even more for the mortality that he lost. That is all I know. Interesting. I shall remember. Now look how the oak embers of our bonfire still glow hot despite the rain. If you're bent on your course, you'll need courage that's just as impervious to the chill. <sighs> May your luck last longer than your storm, brave one. May it indeed. Thank you, Archdruid. is blocked by impenetrable forest. Alexander scoops up some of the red-hot embers in the ancient human skull. Alexander puts the strand of hair into the skull. Alexander cracks the spoiled egg and dumps it into the skull containing the embers and the strand of hair. The spoiled egg hisses as it makes contact with the hot embers. Sounds the steam. Phew, the smell of sulfur. Alexander pulls... Alexander feels a strong...